Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves in a minute. I've got an infant. He doesn't understand uh, what it means for Daddy to go to a conference and talk to people. Uh, so I need a photograph with all of you. Uh, and I hope you're going to be compliant with this. Uh, so we're going to do a selfie. Uh, and then I'd like you to be smiling and waving in the background, and then I can explain to him, this is what Daddy was doing this afternoon before Daddy went to the pub. Uh, and he'll be very happy, he'll be very, very impressed. Uh, so please, uh, just be smiling and waving in the background. Uh, Giles, turn around. You've got to be in it as well, it's a selfie. Uh, no, it's not a selfie. Not that way around, it's not. That's a selfie, there we go, right. Uh, smiling and waving, please, everyone. Smiling and waving, smiling and waving. There we go, excellent. Thank you very much. Right, you'll make my son very happy. Uh, excellent. Right, well, welcome uh, to our talk. Uh, so we're going to be talking on these three different uh, data frame libraries, uh, which uh, I'm sure you're all going to be using uh, and evaluating uh, where we are uh, with the state of the ecosystem uh, right now, because uh, things have been moving on quite a lot. Uh, so who are we? Uh, my name is Ian Oswald. I'm one of the founders of Pi Data London. So I was one of the uh, originators with Emlyn over there uh, and Cecilia of putting together the first uh, Pi Data conference uh, in London uh, like nine, ten, ten years ago, Emlyn? Ten years. Um, and then building the community uh, over time. And you can see up there, we've got over 12,000 members in the monthly meetup. If you're here in London and you want to come along, you should please come along uh, and join our meetup. Uh, I'm one of the authors of O'Reilly's High Performance Python book. So I care about high performance. I care about the tools that enable us to get our job done. Uh, the second edition's out, and I'll be working on the third edition uh, next year. So I need to understand where Polars is uh, and where Dask is going and how things are evolving in our ecosystem. And I've worked with a bunch of big companies that you'd recognize, including the Man Group, who are the uh, the hedge fund that sponsors our monthly meetup. So big props to them, and they're here sponsoring. So go and say hello. Uh, go and say hello to the Man Group, uh, just because they're lovely. They've been sponsoring us forever. And go and say hello to our sponsors. Um, and as a representative of our community, please go and thank your speakers. They're all volunteering here. And go and thank anyone in a yellow t-shirt because they're volunteering too. Go and thank them. It makes the world a better place. Uh, Giles, who are you? So I'm a data scientist. I do a mix of consultancy and contract work. I've worked for businesses including Shell. I've worked for ONS, uh, a small variety of startups. Been a Pi Data regular since 2015 uh, when I got into data science. And prior to that, I was a bioinformatician for 10 years. So I've been working for data, with data for a long time. Um, I've been a Dask user and a PySpark user since about 2017, and I've employed both uh, on multiple projects. Um, had some great results with both crunching maritime ship data, um, so position data, uh, that is, um, which I've done for both Shell and ONS using Dask and PySpark, respectively. Um, and most recently, I developed a port call detection pipeline that can identify port calls by the entire uh, global commercial fleet over a period of months in just a single run um, using those tools. How many data points? So that's a four terabyte data set with about 40 billion rows. Which is a good big so number. It's bigger than the numbers I normally work with. It's a good solid number. Uh, so uh, in my role, I'm now interim chief data scientist uh, with Teams, helping them ship products that work. I used to be the data scientist that wrote a lot of these things. So I'm always focused on the idea of what is it, what tools let me get my job done? But they're not the fastest things, but the things that let me ship a result that actually works for my clients. Um, so here we're going to talk about these uh, three common data frame libraries. Uh, so put your hands up if you're using pandas in any shape or form regularly. Right. Keep your hands up if you're using pandas too right now. Okay, so half the hands, more than half the hands go down. Okay, right. So about a third of you using pandas, uh, pandas too. So we're going to talk a bit about that. Um, how many are using polars uh, in any shape or form? Okay, a small cluster. Oh, okay, more than I thought. Okay, great, excellent. Um, and how many are using Dask uh, in their day-to-day -day work? Okay, so about a third again as well. Okay, right, so that kind of fits uh, our expectation. Um, so uh, being straight honest here, we learned polars in the last two weeks, so we know the least about polars. We've been using pandas for a long time, 15 years since it first came out, um, and Dask is seven, eight years old, so a similar amount of time, but polars only two weeks. Uh, so take our benchmarks uh, with a pinch of salt, but I think you'll see they're, they're pretty interesting. Um, why are we doing this and why are we talking about the data set that we've got, uh, a car data set? Uh, it's because I had a baby during lockdown. You've taken the photograph with me, which is brilliant. Uh, I had this baby. We locked down. We didn't get out of the house. Uh, a bunch of buddies didn't get out of the house. And I decided it was time to do something different. My little one is old enough now that I could go away and leave my wife with him for a week and go and do something silly. So I'm doing a silly charity car rally uh, later in the year, not with Giles, but with some other buddies, uh, driving to Venice and back 2,000 miles, uh, raising money for Parkinson's, a disease that's afflicting one of my driver's parents. Uh, and uh, one of the requirements is to have a car that costs under a thousand pounds. So for the foreigners amongst you all, a thousand pounds is not a lot of 
money to buy a car within the UK and it has to be legal, roadworthy and do 2000 miles and not uh, break or explode. You'll see a slide on that shortly. Uh, Giles, what data are we using? So the MOT test uh, is named after the long defunct Ministry of Transport, but it's an annual roadworthiness test for UK vehicles over three years old. And um, you can download um, anonymized MOT data spanning 2005 to last year from data.gov.uk. Um, so it's a, a, just a mixture of CSV and pipe separated values. And with ask, it's relatively easy to write all 600 plus million rows into a single Parquet data set. So that's what we're using for the basis of our testing here. Um, if you have a car and you know the model, test date and mileage of your vehicle, um, you should be able to um, look it up on the government website. You can find the MOT history and see all the faults that it's had at test time over the years. And um, you should be able to identify your car in that data set uh, by mileage and test date. Um, so here we have a Volvo, which Ian's going to talk about shortly. Uh, in a little while. Remembering that comment about cars not exploding. Uh, so Pandas 2. Um, what's happened with Pandas 2? So we've been using Pandas for a long time. It's 15 years old. Um, we had the 1.0 release uh, a little while ago, uh, a couple of years back, and it seemed pretty solid, but the APIs are still a bit confused. Uh, and uh, we could easily max out our RAM usage and have a lot of inconsistent behavior um, with the execution of our scripts. Um, Pandas 2, I don't know where the interference is coming from. Um, Pandas 2 uh, has a new feature in it, Pi Arrow Data Storage. So replacing the venerable NumPy columnar and 2D data storage uh, engine with uh, contiguous blocks of memory uh, with the new Pi Arrow cross-platform, uh, cross-tool, uh, cross-language storage engine. So Pi Arrow Arrow behind it uh, is used to store our Parquet data on disk and then R and Pi, uh, Pi Spark and other tools will all understand uh, the underlying Arrow data set. So they can copy data without, uh, without or sorry, they can share data without any copies. Really uh, interesting. And it saves uh, memory and it goes faster as we'll see in a minute. Uh, there's been some internal cleanups in Pan as two so that things uh, run with less RAM. Um, and there's some other features like copy on write, which look interesting. We haven't benchmarked them here, but there's some interesting new bits in there. Um, straight after this talk, we encourage you to come and join us upstairs um, on the uh, two floors up in the Beaumont room. We'll carry on discussing higher performance Python. So we can talk about these benchmarks or talk about your needs, your problems, your observations. It'll be great to have you come and join us uh, directly after this. Just come and follow us up to Beaumont. Uh, and tomorrow, Matt uh, Rocklin over there, we've got Matt, the author of Dask. Uh, he'll be giving a talk on the updates behind Dask, some of which should trounce the benchmarks that we show here at the moment. Uh, so Matt will be talking about the advancements we're going to get in Dask later this year, so I encourage you to attend his talk tomorrow. So here's a first result. What do we get out of this Pi Arrow change from the, uh, the default NumPy engine? Who uses strings in pandas typically? Okay, right. So Arrow's brilliant. Everything goes faster and it's great. That's the left column. So at the top left, we've got uh, the make column, Toyota, Volkswagen as a string, uh, inside a DFPDA. That's the arrow version of my pandas data frame. I do the strut len operation, it takes one second. Below it, I've got the NumPy equivalent, DFPDN for NumPy. Um, so it's the same data, just represented with NumPy or arrow. Uh, that same strut len operation on 82 million rows costs seven seconds. So it's about seven times faster doing the same operation on strings. More interestingly, the result at the bottom, 82 million rows is 39 gigabyte in RAM with NumPy or 11 gigabyte with Arrow for the same data set. So you get three times more data in memory if you're using Arrow using Pandas. That's a huge win. I get more data in my machine without having to reconfigure my machine. That's a really nice uh, big improvement. Uh, and on the, why does that keep disappearing? Uh, on the right, uh, DFPDA test mileage and integer nullable integer column. I calculate mean 60 milliseconds. I do the same thing with the NumPy equivalent, 140 milliseconds, twice as slow. Uh, so not that big a deal there, but look, it looks generally like our operations for pure calculation go faster uh, in pandas. Can we use the new Pi Arrow uh, storage engine with our regular tools like Seaborn? Well, yeah, it turns out we can. I don't know why that keeps going. Where's it that? What do you mean? It's, it's not fine. Where's it gone? Maybe Giles, you need to be the one who just keeps going round and round with the mouse. 
because uh, this screen is fine. That's odd. Uh, so, uh, dear fuel, I do a query PDA, uh, get the passing cars, take a sample, assign a year column um, from a date time column, uh, and do a query to get petrol and diesel vehicles. And then I ask uh, Seaborn to do a scatter plot for me, um, where the blue dots, that's diesel, diesel vehicles for the same age, say 2000, 2010, first use. They've got higher mileage, a couple of hundred thousand miles. The petrol vehicles have got a lower mileage, so 50 to 100,000 miles, kind of what we expect to see in the UK. And that operation took about 13 seconds. And we could discuss later on, I've got some slides in the appendix about how to make this particular operation go much faster if I manually tune that operation. Um, but I can use the new Arrow data store in Pandas uh, with Seaborn and the regular tool. So that's nice. Um, so what about Polars? What's, uh, what's the deal with Polars? Uh, so Polars is really young. It's not 15 years old. It's three years old. Uh, it's Rust-based. So it's not a Python library. It's a Python wrapper as a front end around the Rust library for an immutable data store using Arrow written in Rust, uh, which is a much cleaner, much nicer, newer project with many lessons learned from 15 years of data frames in the wider ecosystem. Uh, purely Arrow-based. There's no NumPy in there. So the speed of operation uh, for fundamental operations and the memory storage looks pretty similar for the same uh, arrow in pandas example I showed. Uh, it's inherently multi-core and it's parallelized. And if you use the eager API behind it, which feels a bit like the desk uh, lazy of yeah, lazy computation graph, uh, then we can optimize across all the various optimize uh, operations uh, and end up uh, with a much faster execution, uh, as we'll see in just a moment. And there's some beta out of course, so medium beta support, so reading data that doesn't fit into RAM but does fit on disk, which we can't really do with pandas. I do the same query inside Polars. It looks pretty similar. We've got a pl.col, so kind of Spark-like or PySpark-like, um, but the same operations with columns rather than a sign, but we can do the same kind of things. We get a plot in Seaborn, a contour plot in this case. It's all working great. Six seconds, not 13 seconds, without doing anything particularly different. And it turns out we could tune that pandas query and make it faster, but not quite as fast as the Polar's equivalent. And that's the eager execution. So one item being executed one at a time with no additional optimizations. If we turned on the lazy API, it would go even faster. And we'll see that in a subsequent, subsequent bit. What about a more advanced query? Uh, so here on the left, we're taking the cylinders, cylinder capacity uh, of internal combustion engine cars, so petrol and diesel cars, uh, counting the number of examples that exist by make, because there are many makes of vehicle in, blimey, in the data set, uh, counting them, um, and then calculating the median uh, and doing a sort. So a bunch of common operations that you might expect. Uh, on the left-hand side, we've got DFPDA, so that's the uh, pandas with arrow uh, storage. That operation takes about 18 seconds. So it's not bad. I'm, you know, it's kind of what I'd expect to see. The same operation with an uh, with a lazy data frame in Polars, and we turn an eager in-memory uh, data frame in Polars into a lazy one just by saying uh, dot lazy, uh, and then it becomes something that can go into the query planner. That takes three seconds. That's a huge speed up uh, compared to the regular pandas uh, operation. Uh, so we get these uh, really interesting optimizations for free. We don't have to work for them. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, so first conclusions, uh, pandas and arrow is probably faster than pandas with NumPy, and you can get more data into RAM, and the footprint is smaller. There's some API inconsistency, but it, it looks generally like it's just better. Um, Polar seems to be faster, nearly got it. Uh, Polar seems to be faster than pandas and arrow in general, which is nice. Um, and maybe you can make your pandas as fast as the Polar's equivalent, but you have to work. Uh, so we could talk about that in the discussion session afterwards. And all benchmarks are lies. I reckon if you tried your own queries, you'll find cases uh, where Polars is slower than the pandas equivalent. I'd love to hear about those. Um, but this is just us working through this data set, trying things, and this is the general result that we saw. So I've now got an option to buy uh, a Volvo V50 for this rally. This was about six weeks ago. It's kind of interesting, great. Um, I've checked it out with uh, two of my buddies, my co-drivers. We've got a vehicle under a thousand pound that looks sensible. It's well MOT'd, it's got full dealer stamps. It looks like a really, really good vehicle. Uh, so uh, I've got the question, it's got 181,000 miles on the clock. Uh, is that more or less than the average that we'd expect to see for a vehicle of that age? So here I'm using Polars to do a query. I do a filter for Volvo's V50. 
350 uh, diesels that were constructed in the year 2005 that were tested in 2022 and who passed. Uh, so I get a subset of data. I do a describe. We see a describe output pretty similar to what we see in pandas. Uh, and then I ask SciPy, oh, SciPy, can you calculate the percentile for this particular uh, mileage given all of the vehicles that we've got in this data set, the one and a half thousand? Uh, and it just gives me the 80th percentile. So, okay, it's high mileage, but not crazy high. The important thing is Polars with Arrow works in SciPy. So it's great. So our wider tooling ecosystem seems to be working. So I should buy this, right? This is a good car. It's under a thousand pound. It meets the requirements. I go and buy it. I own it for 23 hours uh, and then it explodes on me. Uh, it was a very terrifying experience. I was driving down a country road uh, and then all of a sudden the rev counter starts to blip up and then it goes maxed out. I've got my foot off the accelerator. It's going up at max. Um, kind of terrified, take it out of gear and it's still up at max. And then the road covers in white smoke and I can't see the road anymore. And that's really quite terrifying. That's a blind corner um, just ahead of us there. Uh, so I then pull over quickly um, and I turn the car off and it keeps up at uh, max revs. And I've got the key in my hand, feeling like an idiot, feeling like an idiot whilst white smoke starts pouring into the driver's cabin, at which point I abandon the vehicle and run away uh, and wait several minutes whilst it literally melts itself. Uh, and then the vehicle is toast. Uh, and then we have to call the fire brigade uh, and the police and we got some fast responders out. And it was terribly exciting and my heart rate is quite elevated just recounting that because it was really terrifying. Uh, I've never had a vehicle diesel turbo run on event before. Uh, I recommend you don't have it. So that vehicle was a write off. To give myself a moment to relax, I'm going to hand over to Giles. So uh, back to the data. So um, Ian wanted to test a few different functionalities. So um, here he's resampled uh, two years of the MOT test result data uh, with Polars. Um, and so this is a two year subset of the data. He's using the Eager API. Um, so this is in RAM. Um, and he's using group by dynamic, which is equivalent to Pandas resample. Um, so fairly straightforward.